In this class, we're going to take a look at how you multiply and divide algebraic fractions. So pretty much everything with algebraic fractions works like the numerical fraction equivalent. So let's maybe start there and think, well, how do we multiply and divide number fractions? So if you had, say, two fifths times three over seven, multiplication is the easiest operation with fractions because all you do is multiply the two top numbers together, so the two numerators, and multiply the two bottom numbers, the denominators, and then get your result. And then if you can simplify that, you simplify it, otherwise you just leave it. So two times three is six, divided by five times seven, 35. Quickly check and see if that can be simplified. There's no common factor there, so that's basically us done. If this was a divide instead, so if we had two fifths divided by three sevenths, so a slightly more difficult case. We, we use a little trick here because it's very difficult to get your head around dividing by a fraction. When we divide by a whole number, we can kind of visualize it, but dividing by a fraction ah, doesn't quite work. So what we do, there's a little trick. You leave the first fraction the same, so two fifths. You turn, this, you turn the operation into a multiply and you invert or flip basically the second fraction. So that's going to apply when we come to look at these algebraic fraction divides as well. And then you just take the same divide, uh, multiply rule we had on the top. So two times seven gives you 14, five times three gives you 15. So the answer would be 14 over 15. So it's quite, it's quite easy. It's also quite easy when you do these with algebraic fractions. Uh, fractions that have got algebraic terms in them. So for the multiply, we're just going to multiply the numerator and the denominator and then simplify if we can. For these guys with the divides, we've got the extra step of flipping the second fraction, but then it's just turning into a multiply, so it's quite, it's quite straightforward. Okay, cool. Right, so let's um, work through the examples now that we've got the idea down. So 2a times 6 gives us uh, 12a. And then we've got 5 times 7a on the uh, denominator, so that's going to be 35a. So looking at our number terms, there's no common factor there. Nope, no common factor, so they're fine. Um, we can divide top and bottom by a to get rid of the a's, basically, and end up with 12 over 35. If you're not quite sure about simplifying algebraic fractions, which is effectively what I've done there to get from here to here, then maybe check out the class on that first, or it's a fairly straightforward technique. So if there's any simplifying to do in here, like that one there, just follow along. And if you're still not sure, then maybe check out that class afterwards. It's quite common for these guys to simplify at the end, just in the same way that numerical fractions quite often simplify. These guys did not, but in general, it's fairly common for them to simplify as your final step of working. Okay, so moving on, let's have a go at this guy. Same sort of scenario. So 5a times, uh, sorry, 5b times uh, 9 is going to give us 45b. And then on the denominator, 6 times 10b is going to give us 60b. So you can see immediately that the b's are effectively going to, to cancel. Um, it's very tempting to just cancel them. I mean, you, you can just cancel them, but just remember you're only canceling them because you're dividing top and bottom by B. That's, what, that's why they're cancelling. So they're, they're effectively going to disappear, and it's going to leave us with 45 over 60. 45 and 60 are both divisible by 5, though, so we can take this fraction down to a lower form. So dividing the top by 5, and we get 9. Dividing the bottom by 5, and we get... 12. Um, let me just check that that's right. So dividing by 5, 9, yep, that's fine. And we can see that these guys are both now divisible by 3. So we can take this a little further. So dividing the numerator by 3 and we get 3, and the denominator by 3 and we get 4. So if, if you're cleverer than I am with numbers, you might go straight from there to there, realizing that this number is just effectively 3 quarters. But um, Sometimes you need to go through those intermediate steps. I need to go through those steps anyway. So um, that would be the final answer. So notice that that's simplified really quite far down. From this quite ugly looking thing, we've ended up with just um, three over four. So that sometimes happens with, with these. Okay, cool, right, so that's the idea with multiplying. We're gonna use that idea again over here after we've made these into multiplies by flipping the second fraction. So 
pretty much a no-brainer with these. If you see dividing by a fraction, you're going to turn it into a multiply and flip the second one. That's pretty much the only way you want to think about it. So we're going to get 2a over 5b, so just leaving that first fraction alone. And then change your operation into a multiply. Flip the second fraction, so we're inverting it to make it 15b over 7. And then just working through the same multiplication style as we did over here. So multiplying the two numerators together, we're going to get 30ab. So you can't multiply the a and the b together, so we're just going to sit them next to each other to imply multiplication. And then we've got 5b times 7, so that's going to be 35b. Okay, so I'm just going to move this guy a bit lower down. I'm going to write it down first so that I don't forget it. So 3 over 5x divided by 9a over 7x. So we've managed to get our fractions um, converted into one single fraction, but we can simplify this because the numbers have got a common factor of 5, so we can divide top and bottom by 5 to give us a 6 and a 7. The letters have got a common factor of b, so we can divide top and bottom by b, or again think of it as cancelling the b's, and we would just end up with an a on the top. So 6a over 7 is our final answer. Okay, so checking out the last one, just going to go through the same thing again. So start by flipping that second fraction, leave the first fraction alone. A lot of students will make the mistake of flipping the first fraction or even flipping both of the fractions, but it's only the second one that you need to flip. So turning it into a multiply and then rewriting the second fraction as 7x over 9 so we've got a bit of a mix of letters going on here. So 3 times 7x on the numerator gives us 21x. And then on the denominator we're going to have 45xa. So you can see straight away that the x's are going to cancel. Um, and just quickly checking for a common factor between these. The numbers are a little awkward but 3 divides into 21 and 3 also divides into 45. It's not quite so obvious this time, so we need to work a little harder to, to, to check that. It's easy to, to miss that, but um, just keep a close eye on the numbers. I'm just going to pull this guy up here, because I'm getting lower and lower. Um, so we're going to cancel off the x's, common factor of 3, so dividing top and bottom by 3, and we'll end up with 7 on the numerator. Uh, 45 divided by 3 is uh, 15. And the x is going to disappear, but the a is going to stay there. So our final answer is 7 over 15a. There's no real final format to expect for these. I mean, if you look at the way these came out, these guys were just numerical. This guy's got, um, still got an algebraic term in it on the numerator. This guy's got an algebraic term on the denominator. So you'll see all sorts of formats on the, on the final answer. Really, really common technique, this, particularly the multiply. Um, but the divide as well. So this is one that's worth spending quite a bit of time getting comfortable with. It's not a particularly difficult technique. If you've already worked numerical fractions, which I'm sure you probably have by this point, then it's just an extension of that. The, the technique is the same. It's just really recognising the algebraic terms that can cancel and making sure you simplify it as far as you possibly can. So spend a little time working a few practice questions on this, but don't go crazy with it because it's not a particularly difficult technique and also you're probably going to see this in a bunch of topics anyway, so you'll be getting practice as you see it in those other places.